You may not be an expert in lens filters, but you can be a genius. Back in the day, film photography used to have lots of different filters. You put things on your camera, more lenses, more glass, more plastic, different things for different effects. Do I need lens filters with digital? Using correction filters, special effects filters, double exposure filters, uh, star filters, all these things were very helpful in the film world, but today we don't really need to use very many. But there are a couple that we'd like to use. Most filters are definitely not used today. What lens filters are still important? What happens when two photographers come from completely different schools of thought? I don't know. <laughs> they use a polarizing filter. <laughs> But the first filter, though, is a polarizing filter, since the joke. A polarizing filter helps you to take away the glare off the water and to take reflections out of glass. It's helpful in a lot of different ways when you have scenes that have a little bit of glare, reflection, and you want to take it off. You just put this on top of your lens, and you can either turn it as a circular polarizer to take more or less of the glare out of the water or the glass, just like that. Now, it's also very helpful when you use it with landscape photography and outdoor photography, fall colors and fall leaves. It will take the color of the leaves and make it to pop because there will be less glare on the leaves. So that's very helpful. We can also use it on skies to get much more rich, much bluer. The, the polarized, the reflective light is not there. Kind of like when we wear polarized sunglasses. Polarized sunglasses have the exact same effect. It takes off some of the glare when you're driving, when you're enjoying the summer sun. It just makes it better. So polarizing filters are good for that. Now, there are some downsides to polarizing filters. When you have them on top of your lens, a polarizing filter will make it so your autofocus will not work as well. Autofocus struggles to go through that refraction of how the polarizing light works, so it's just not as effective. Not totally inoperable, but it will not work as efficiently or as correctly. Also, a polarizing filter will reduce your exposure, maybe up to a stop or two, depending on how much polarized light and the angle that's being reflected, you might lose or darken your exposure one to two stops. A neutral density filter, otherwise called an ND filter, will help to darken your exposure like this. So it makes it so you can have a different shutter speed, a slower shutter speed while shooting in outdoors for some creative effects. A neutral density filter is kind of like filtering sunglasses. It helps to darken everything in a bright day. And for your camera, it helps you to use a slow shutter speed for creative purposes. If you want to shoot maybe several seconds, you can have a slow ND filter, really dark. It will block the light so you can use a slower shutter speed to get some creative techniques. This is a variable ND filter. As I turn it, I can make it brighter or darker. Now there's downsides to a variable ND filter because it will actually sometimes have a little halo and effect that the ND isn't as nice. Now the advantage of a variable ND filter is I don't have to put on different ND filters for different amounts of darkness. So I can have one filter and I can control it by opening and shutting it brighter and darker. And that's kind of a nice thing, but the quality sometimes is not desired by professionals. Oh. So the ND filter will allow you to have aperture control and shutter speed control to be creative with your shutter speed and apertures. It gives you lots of options to have narrow depth of field even when shooting outside or to have very slow shutter speeds like this to give you a creative option even in bright daylight, which is not possible typically without the filters. Sometimes in the video world, the video, we want a 60th of a second shutter speed because if we have too fast of a shutter speed, like a 500th or a 1000th during video, it looks a little turkey jerky and it doesn't look very smooth. Well, we'll put ND filters on our lens for video and for photography creative purposes. The best way to learn lens filters is to get a filter, a polarizing, an ND filter, and get out there and start taking pictures. Practice, practice, practice. I can't wait to see what you come up with next. Remember, you may not be a photography expert, but you can be.